Hey crafty friends, how are you all doing? Thank you so much for joining me. This is Anat Kessler with Saturday Extravaganza and today I'm going to create a shadow box with a reverse canvas. So all you need to start with is an 8x8 canvas and a dabber with liquid distress ink. Uh, it's vintage photo color and we're gonna go over all the corners. Basically instead of doing it with uh, just a plain distress ink which is much lighter and softer we need a bolder color and we're gonna go over the corners so when we cover it with pattern paper uh, you won't see white strips peaking so we're gonna do that on all the corners just go into the the canvas pretty good. I actually don't want to uh, heat set it. It's just going to dry by itself. And look how gorgeous that looks. And um, so now I'm going to bring in, I'm going to use uh, Graphic 45 Mother Goose Collection. I know it's kind of old, but I really like it. And I've told you before that I sometimes use, you know, old papers, not necessarily new ones. So we start by measuring the the frame because basically what we have here is a sort of a shadow box with a frame around it. So we're going to start cover the front frame and first we're going to go over the corners, the edges, the inner edges with the same distress ink. So I've measured it with my ruler and it's one inch wide. So I'm going to start with the color of my choice which is this red with dots and I'm going to cut four strips one inch wide. And then I'm going to show you how to cover it very nicely with the diagonal edge. I'm just going to see that this is the right measurement and that it fits correctly and then I can go ahead and cut three more s strips of one inch wide paper. And by the way if you see my nails change color it's because it they do change color depending on the temperature. It's really cool. If it's cold they're blue, if it's warm or hot they're green. So. It's a lot of fun. So now the edges are cold, colder than the other part of the nail. So it's half and half. Looks like French, right? Anyways, back to our project. So I'm going to mark the two sides of the corner with a pencil and then cut the strip, the edge of the, the paper strip. See, like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. This will give us a really nice finish in the front and very accurate too because you are going to measure each strip of paper separately because I don't know if you know this but canvases are sometimes not very straight they're kind of straight but one can be 45 degrees in the in the uh, corner and then it can be 47 degrees or 43 degrees and then if you measure it all of the strips the same measurements like with a ruler or something it can be a bit off but if you measure it on the canvas itself each strip where it's supposed to go then it will look really good so now you measure the second strip and again the inner corner and the outer corner and then you cut in between I'm just gonna make this a little bit narrower. See how good that looks? And then you go ahead and do the other side. Make sure that it doesn't move. If you need to secure it with a little bit of glue then just make sure it's not permanent glue. So we're gonna go ahead and do all four sides of the front frame in the same method and then we're gonna glue them one by one you measure each each strip you cut it diagonally at the edge on the edges 
and then you glue it down because like I said it can change so you have to measure it according to the surface that you're working with or on and of course don't forget to ink the edges and since the canvas is not straight when you glue down your strips you can see that beautiful brown border that we created when we uh, inked all the uh, edges of the canvas before with the liquid distress ink this is why we did it so we have a nice finish so this is our last front strip of paper and I'm using liquid glue because that is so much stronger than just using double-sided tape you can also use hot glue but I don't think it's necessary here and I'm gonna go over the edges again with the liquid distress ink just to make sure that I have a nice finish and a nice edge all around see that gives it so much more definition and looks really nice okay so now we're going to go ahead and start covering our inner parts of the frame so you have to measure it mine is half an inch wide and I'm using this paper which has writing on it so I want the horizontal strips to be with the horizontal writing and the vertical strips to be with vertical well it's not vertical writing but I don't want the writing to be you know upside down so for the vertical ones I keep the paper straight and for the horizontal one I just go with the same direction as the writing on the paper as the text on the paper so that will be really cool when we once we put that inside our frame so again four strips we don't need diagonal angles here we'll just cut the strips to size and glue them down to the canvas again and I need to measure the outside parts as well they are actually the same width I'm not worried about the length right now I'm just cutting four more strips of half an inch so they will be for later to cover the outside of our canvas and they're going to be from the same pattern paper so just going to cut them now and put them aside and do it that will be our next step okay so now for the inner strips of paper the ones that are supposed to go on the inside of our canvas I'm cutting them at six inches because that's the length and again canvases are sometimes not straight so it can be not exactly six inches it can be five inches and fifteen of a sixteenth or something so I started with six and we'll see and I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the liquid distress ink and I've used my fingers to cover the really cor the bad corners because the dabber doesn't reach there so you will see now that this is I've cut it to size it wasn't six inches exactly and then I've see it's a little bit longer so you have to measure and cut to size it's gonna be a little shorter than six inches and then this is a vertical strip so the writing is accordingly and the front of the strip is still white because you know when double-sided uh, cardstock is usually usually has um, white core so you can see the white core when you glue it sideways that's why I've distressed it with some distress ink just so it won't show a little white uh, peak a little white strip there so I'm going on with uh, gluing in all my strips of paper with the inside of the canvas 
this is also a bit long I'm going to shorten it just taking a little tiny bit off every time and if it's still not to size then I keep on trimming it until it's exactly the right length and then making sure it's straight gluing it down moving on to our last strip of paper this collection really has nice colors I really like it remember that I've used it before when we created the fairy tale art journal you can check it out in the video list it's still there okay so now we're gonna go ahead and do the outside of the canvas and I'm not gonna cut it now I'm just gonna glue down the strips of paper and after I glue them down then I'm gonna cut them to size because again it's really hard to measure and sometimes the corner is not exactly accurate because you know they fold the canvas there when they staple it on the back and sometimes it's not straight so I would rather just glue down the paper on the side let it dry for a few seconds and then cut it with scissors and then I have a nice edge and this is the other side and I'm gonna do the other two sides now and then our canvas is going to be covered and looks like a frame like a shadow box or a frame this is the other side don't be stingy with your glue because it has to hold make sure that's straight and then you cut it trim off the excess and again I'm gonna go again with the liquid distressing just to have a little bit nicer edges on the paper as well especially if it's black if you would just use a regular you know the ink pad it's it won't show so our frame is ready and now we can cover the inside now I don't know if you've noticed it before you probably did but there is a little tiny gap under the wood frame so I'm gonna cut my paper to six by six inches and I know it's bigger than the surface I need to cover but I'm gonna tuck it under the frame and this way I'll have a really nice coverage the, of the entire surface and no you know margins or places that will not be covered and I'm gonna ink the edges and I'm gonna ink them with a wide um, area around it because they're gonna be tucked under and I'm gonna put the glue directly on the surface because it will be easier for me to tuck the paper under the wood frame that way if I would to put the glue under the paper then I would have glue on the outer frame and everything will smear but this way it's just on the canvas itself see and now you tuck it under and everything is nice and covered so now we're gonna create our layers I've cut all kinds of um, images they're all from the Mother Goose collection. They're all from the different pages there. And what I'm going to do is create a scene with all those images that I cut and a photo of my kids. So I'm starting and what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it in layers with foam tape. So we'll have three dimensional layers. Um, so the first layer that we're going to do is the one that is completely glued to the back of the canvas and has no, it doesn't, um, it's not raised, okay? 
this is mother goose she's gonna go over the frame the front part of the frame on the outside and she has those two ropes that she's hanging from the frame and this is she's gonna go there and another piece that I want to glue down completely to the back is this piece here <coughs> excuse me and this is gonna go in here and whatever I need tucked under the frame then there's still room there to tuck more things and the edge of the branch was in my way so I just cut it and put it somewhere else now I'm gonna start with the, the layer that only has one uh, one piece of foam tape because the other ones are going to have two pieces or three pieces according to how much I want them raised uh, above the surface so these are my clouds they're going to have one is going to be inside and one is going to be outside but they're both the one with the well I think I'm going to do foam tape on both of them now the good thing about using a foam tape like this is that you cut it to size and you can determine how large you want your piece to be. That's why I'm not using dots. And the little cow with the moon is also going to be only with one piece of foam tape up there. This is the girl Mary with her sheep. Um, Mary I think will also have one piece of foam tape so she'll only be slightly raised above the surface but her sheep is gonna get two layers of foam tape so she's gonna be a bit higher and this is how you create three-dimensional pieces you play with how high how raised you want them to be and Humpty Dumpty is gonna go in there as well but first I'm gonna cover gonna add some flowers as background so the background is c glued down to the back of the canvas and Humpty Dumpty um, I need more flowers so I'm going to go ahead and cut some more flowers from the paper. I'm using very small scissors. It's very comfortable to when you do fussy cutting to do it with small scissors. So they can go into all the places that you need to cut. So I've added those flowers and Humpty Dumpty is going to get um, two layers. One ink the edges so image is going to be nice and defined two layers for Humpty Dumpty there this m will make sure that if he falls he can get up again <laughs> I really like this collection it really reminds me of my childhood and all the stories and gives you a nice fuzzy fun feeling okay and now I'm gonna bring in my boys so I used um, I cut their image from the photo and I want them to be the focal point of this uh, canvas so they're gonna get three maybe even four layers I think four layers is gonna be best let's see three I don't think no I think three is not enough we'll add one more and make it four layers of foam tape they're gonna be really raised see that and now I'm gonna start embellish the front of the bottom frame the bottom part of my frame gonna start with these flowers it takes a lot of time to cut all the pieces I will not lie 
um, and I didn't want to do this in front of the camera because it takes a long time um, but I think it's worth it it's really cool result and I'm gonna add all the elements here and some more flowers especially the flowers take a long time to cut because they have the leaves and then little flowers I'm gonna move the flowers there and then but it's really cool that you can play with all the pieces and position them where whenever wherever you want the dog is gonna get one layer here and another here and that's it I think I'm going to add a few stars and some these are uh, shapes of stamps that are in the are on one of the pattern papers in the collection so I've cut them these were very easy to cut and I've punched a few stars that I'm going to add as well and I think this one might get some foam tape or even the stars I want them not to be the same um, height They're, one of them are going to be raised and some of them are not going to be raised So I have three big ones and two little ones to add. And I think that's it. So I really liked how this turned out. And you can of course do this in a larger scale on a 12 by 12 canvas and add even more images. And um, I hope I've inspired you just a little tiny bit to create your own uh, shadow boxes out of canvases it's really easy and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and you had a lot of fun as much as I did thank you very much for watching and joining me and I'll see you all in the next tutorial bye you guys have a great weekend